Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Man, check this out. (laughs) On this episode, what I want to talk about is customer service. Uh, At the time of this recording, I personally think that customer service definitely isn't what it used to be or what it should be. Uh, We are now in the post-pandemic era, quote unquote. And honestly, I think that customer service across the board, uh, whether it be food service, whether it be products and services, uh, I think it's really fallen off. And I don't necessarily know that we'll ever get it back to really what it should be. Um, And I'll give you a couple examples as we move forward throughout this podcast. Um, First and foremost, I think the biggest thing that you have to remember uh, particularly when talking about a uh, customer service issue is that one, it's a business transaction, right? You're providing some type of product. You're providing some type of service. You're providing some type of experience for me. And I, in turn, am paying you for it. Ultimately, what I want to do is I want to get what I paid for. You know, I want to get my money's worth, basically. Uh, And if I don't feel like I've got my money's worth, then there's a problem. But I'll be honest with you guys. I've actually come to the point where, in some instances, I almost expect the customer service not to be up to par. Uh, Case in point, I'll use McDonald's as an example. And I know it's going to sound like I'm picking on McDonald's, but I'm not because I'm a kid who grew up, you know, in the seventies, eighties and nineties, McDonald's was my joint. Like I've been to McDonald's probably more than, you know, any other place I've ever been in my life when it comes to food places. Um, and McDonald's was, you know, the joint for me. Uh, now not so much. Now <laughs> the most I'll get from McDonald's is some fries. Cause that's really the only thing that they have on their menu. Maybe if I'm feeling good, maybe a grilled chicken sandwich, maybe. Uh, But, you know, that's about it. Um, And I haven't had a burger uh, from McDonald's probably within the better part of the last 15 15 years or so. Uh, Maybe a little longer than that. Um, But, you know, I grew up on it. Grew up on it. But I'll give you an example. Like when I go to McDonald's, let's say I'm going to McDonald's and I'm ordering for my son, Brandon, and my daughter, Skylar. They always get the same thing. Brandon's going to get a bacon quarter pounder with cheese with no pickles. Skylar's going to get a quarter pounder with cheese with bacon um, with no onions. Uh... And I'm going to get fries, right? So if I go to McDonald's today, I am almost positive that if I place that order, I've just gotten to a point where I know that they're going to get that order wrong. Brandon's going to have everything on it. <laughs> Skylar's going to have uh, no onions, but tomatoes on it. Tomatoes don't even come on the sandwich. <laughs> so I just know that they're going to get it wrong. So I've gotten to a point where I don't even leave the drive through without checking the food to make sure that it's okay because nothing is worse than ordering your food, which is like something that happened a couple of weeks ago where we ordered the same thing. I get home, Brandon's got fries, Skylar's got fries, but guess who didn't get fries? Yours truly. And that's all that I ordered was a large fry. And by that time, you know, you're at home, you've already, you paid for the large fry, but you know, it's $4.50, which is crazy in and of itself, but it's $4.50 down the drain. I mean, I could get back in the car and go back to McDonald's and say, hey, here's my order. I didn't get any fries, but, you know, is it really worth the fight, depending on how you feel? But I expect McDonald's to kind of mess that type of stuff up. But again, it's a business transaction. I'm giving you money. I expect you to get my food order correctly. And I get 
very frustrated when it's not done. And maybe I shouldn't, but I'll be honest with y'all. I think customer service has really fallen off since the pandemic. And I don't necessarily know that it's going to get any better when it comes to stuff like this. So if you're not getting DoorDash or, you know, some type of food service or something like that, I don't necessarily know that they're going to get your order right. And I think that's bad customer service because I, I don't think that they, meaning McDonald's or any other fast food place, um, they're not in the business to get it wrong, but they're so overwhelmed because some of them are short staffed. Some of them have people, kids who just don't care. So, I mean, like they don't care. They just put food in there. It don't matter. And the, the odds are likely that you're probably not coming back to, to get the order right or whatever. Um, or if you're sitting at the drive through that you're going to drive off and, you know, not even care about it. Um, but again, it's a business transaction. I'm providing you the money. I want things to go a certain way. I want my order to be correct. Um, if I go to Ocean Prime, I want my order to be right. <laughs> if I order my steak medium well, I want it medium well. I don't want it well. I don't want it medium. You ask me how I want it cooked. I want it medium well. Um, and so thus, you know, that can adversely, you know, affect tips. It adversely affects my experience as far as how I feel about how I was, you know, handled, particularly when you got to get the manager involved or something like that. Um, but here's the thing I'll say. When you talk about as far as food service, I kind of almost expect McDonald's to get it wrong. I don't expect Ocean Prime to get it wrong. I expect them to get it right. I expect Waffle House, and I love Waffle House. <laughs> I try to go to Waffle House at least once a month. I love Waffle House, but I expect them to get it wrong. But I expect Ocean Air to get it right. I expect a place like Marcel or any other, you know, seafood place or steakhouse. If you're spending, you know, into the triple digits as far as I'm concerned on a meal, then yeah, I, I expect you to get it right. Um, another thing, there's an old saying that the customer is always right. I don't think so. <laughs> Cause a lot of times the customer is wrong. And a lot of times the customer could be dead wrong, but the business mindset and the business model says to tell the customer that they're right. Well, the customer could be wrong. Maybe, just maybe, you didn't order what you said you ordered. Or maybe you didn't pay what you thought you paid. Or maybe you misread the receipt. It, there could have been tons of ways that it could be wrong. Um, you know, it's funny because I remember hearing a coworker uh, once. Um, she was complaining about some charges on her cell phone bill. And this coworker <laughs> uh, decided to take claim with her cell phone, cell phone provider. Uh, and she proceeded to make call at work. And she was loud enough to where we all could hear her. And she, you know, lit into the customer service rep on the other end. Pretty nice. I mean, she wasn't very respectful. She was kind of loud. Uh, because they had threatened to turn her phone off because this particular fee had not been paid. And, you know, after hearing her talk on the phone, uh, she got off the phone. I, it didn't, it, the conversation really, to me, didn't sound as if it was resolved. So I said, hey, you mind if I take a look at your, uh, your bill? She was like, no, here it is. So she let me look at it. And I saw the charges on there. And there was a reoccurring charge. and. If you look at the statement, it tells you where the charge came from. And it was a charge that, you know, could have easily been removed um, at her request. But she had been charged this, I guess, over a period of time. And it built up to where, you know, the charge was something like $60. Um, because as she was paying the bill, she wasn't paying the charge. And her thing was, well, look, I'm just paying the bill. I'm not paying this charge. And the charge accumulated and got, like I said, up to like $60. And basically the person who was on the other end, the customer service rep told her like, look, 
if you don't pay this, we're going to cut your phone off. And all hell broke loose when she heard that. Um, but in theory, all she had to do was say, hey, look, take this off of my bill so I'm not. Because here's the thing. Whatever that charge was, it was a charge that she agreed to have. She don't remember agreeing to it, but she agreed to that particular charge, right? And when you sign up for a cell phone or you sign up for this or you sign up for that, a lot of that stuff is in the fine print. And if you don't read it, the onus is on you, the consumer, to, you know, monitor your bills and check for stuff like that. So she was basically what we call LAW loud and wrong. <laughs> and I mean, had she not been in an office setting, I'm sure she would have gotten a cussing on the phone. And that doesn't help anything. But, you know, businesses tell you that the customer's always right. So she explained to me that she eventually got them to uh, break up uh, the payment of the $60 over like, I think her next 10 payments or what have you. So she was going to have to pay it back, but she only paid basically $10 on her next six phone bills to pay it. And, you know, she was, I guess, somewhat satisfied, but ultimately <laughs> she still had to pay it because it was something she agreed to when she got her phone. Um, so yeah, it, it, the customer's not always right. In this case, my coworker was wrong. I mean, she could object to the fee that was on her phone but the manner in which she went about handling it you can't do that you just can't do that the experiences that you have particularly with and i'll use food service for an example uh the question i have for you is should you tip or shouldn't you tip um that one's always really really touchy and 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 i'll go through a couple of instances um so let's say you order, I don't know, you, you call in and you order some wings. You order some wings and fries. You order the combo, the number five. So you, order, you call your little wing place. You got 10 wings, fries, and a drink for $14. So when you come and pick it up, should you leave a tip? Or should you just put zero, get your food, and go? That's always an interesting question, and it's it's almost, almost seems like it's always divided as to whether or not you should leave a tip or not. Some folks don't leave a tip. Some do. For me, I guess it depends on the experience that I have once I get to the counter to pick up my food. Uh, but there's been times where I, I ain't leave no tip. <laughs> like, for who? For what? <laughs> but it, it really just depends. It really and truly just depends. Um, here's what I'll say about tips. Tips are, you know, how your wait waiters and waitresses make their money. Um, so I am not lost in the sense of knowing that and understanding that that's how these people make their money. And I want to make sure that they get paid, especially now that we're, you know, on the other side of the pandemic where people are trying to get as much money as they can. Um, but my tipping is a reflection of my time in that particular eating spot. Um, if I go to dinner, I'll just use, <laughs> I'll use Applebee's as an example, because I had a recent trip to Applebee's and it was, wasn't good. It wasn't good. Uh, we just decided one night we didn't feel like cooking. So me, Cherie, Skyler, and Brandon, our two kids, we went, well, our two kids that are here, the other older two are in college. Shout out to Dion and Cameron. Um, we decided, hey, let's go to our local Applebee's. So we went around the corner to Applebee's, sat down for a bite to eat. Well, you know, uh, it started off rocky because I came and I wanted uh, the little, um, I wanted something. And I wanted some wings. They didn't have any wings. Now, this is 8 o'clock, like on a Wednesday night. I don't know how or why you don't have wings on eighty on on a, on a Wednesday night, but they were out of wings. So the waiter he takes our order. Um, before actually he he got the uh, to bring out the appetizer. I asked for the the spinach dip, with the chips, and 
he brought that out. But I mean, it took him like 20 minutes to bring that out. And, you know, we're looking around. There are people who are around us who've gotten their food. We still haven't even gotten to our appetizers yet. So we get our appetizers, we eat that. And that wasn't, you know, it was okay. Um, and the waiter just disappeared. And, you know, again, it's Applebee's, so it's not Ocean Air, which is my favorite, one of my favorite restaurants. I know it's not Ocean Air, so I don't, I probably shouldn't say this, but I don't expect the type of level of treatment that I'm going to get at Ocean Air because I'm spending more money at Ocean Air as opposed to Applebee's. And so the waiter comes back and he finally gets the food. Everybody's placed their order. Uh, Skylar gets her order. Um, <clears throat> Brandon got his order. Uh, Sharice got her order. Guess who didn't get their order? Me. And I was the first to order. And I don't think, and I think it was a situation where the, the waiter, he tried to memorize what everybody had ordered. And so when he came back and he gave them their plates and he said, oh, you had the blah, 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 blah. And I said, no, I had this. And I pointed to it on the menu. Oh, okay. Well, let me, let me go back and check on that. What that told me right there was that you didn't place my order. <laughs> Meanwhile, my family's eating and I'm sitting here, you know, I got an extra thing of chips because he, he brought out more chips, but the chips were at that point, I didn't want any more chip and no more dip. I was, I wanted my, my food. and so. You know, I wasn't happy at all. And so I was like, hey, well, you know what? Saving grace, I can, you know, I'll do dessert. You know, I, I normally don't eat a dessert, but I was like, you know what? I want to have a blondie. Let me just have a blondie. My, my friends have told me about this blondie that is incredible at, at Applebee's. I never had a blondie before from Applebee's. And so I said, well, hey, the guy comes back. He said, hey, well, you guys want dessert? Nobody else wants to do it. I said, hey, can I get a blondie? Oh, we're out of blondie. Said, okay. So <laughs> my order's jacked up. I'm the last one to eat. And you don't have a blondie and you don't have wings. This hasn't been a good experience. And so the check came. And I look and, you know, I'm always the one who, you know, writes the checks, you know, calculates the tip or whatever like that. And Sharice was like, are you going to leave him a tip? And I was like, I'm gonna leave him a tip, but it ain't gonna be a nice one. Um, and my tip was, I, it might have been five dollars, and I was being generous. I mean, because the service was just that bad. It was that bad, and it was hot in there. And it was, and here's the thing: it was a Wednesday night, and it wasn't a lot of people in there, but it was like hot in Applebee's. I don't know if they turned the eight, the, the heat up or something like that, but it wasn't that cold outside. But it was, it was. I mean, like I'm literally was sitting at the table. At one point with the menu, like fanning myself like I had an old Martin Luther King church fan in the church. So, you know, it, it's like my experience wasn't good. And my tip reflected that. Now, I normally don't take it personal on the person who is serving, but but he dropped the ball. And he wasn't a good host and he wasn't he wasn't very attentive. Uh he was kind of going he appeared to me like he was going through the motions. He was just trying to make it to nine o'clock when he got off. So um, I don't have a problem with restaurants that have gratuity included. Uh, you know, I don't have a problem with that at all. But, you know, a tip is based on my experience there. If, if I have a good experience, I'm going to tell. Now, normally I, I tip 20, 30 percent on off top. But no, nah, man, I'm not just going to give you my money just because I showed up and you barely gave me my food. No, I'm not doing that at all. And so you have to be mindful of stuff like that. The tip is, there's no guarantee with the tip. Now, I do believe in tipping. Again, I believe in paying those who serve, uh, particularly if the experience is, is a good one. But you earn that tip. Right or wrong, you earn it. And if you don't do enough to earn it, you're not going to get it. <laughs> as simple as that. Um, another customer, customer service issue came into play uh, here recently uh, at the time of this recording a couple of months ago. Uh, if you guys are on social media, you you probably heard the story of the uh, famous TikToker, uh, Keith Lee. Um, Keith Lee is a guy who on TikTok, he's a, an influencer, if you will. I think he's got like 5 million followers or something like that. Uh, appears to be a really nice guy. What he is, he's a food critic. And what he does is he goes from city to city and he, you know, goes to businesses. Um, the places that he goes to to go eat um, are more often than not, uh, you know, 
smaller businesses. A lot of them are black, black owned businesses. And he gives his reviews. And the thing that has happened because he's such a big positive influencer, uh, he's been in situations where he's gone to uh, like little mom and pop black owned businesses and, you know, his reviews, particularly if he's got, if he's gotten great customer service um, has, you know, created a rush of people, you know, patronizing those businesses and, you know, saw that you would see things turn around for that particular business. So the man is out here doing great work. Um, prior to him coming to Atlanta, I'd never heard of him before. And it's been, you know, that's where I live in the city of Atlanta. And so, uh, brother Keith Lee decided to come to Atlanta and he hit up a few brunch spots, spots, um, brunch spots are pretty popular in this city. Um, be it right or wrong. <laughs> um, but the thing that's interesting is, is that, you know, with the brunch spots come a level of scrutiny, a level of, uh, foolishness, <laughs> a level of a little bit of everything. Right. And so what Keith Lee normally does is he does not go into the establishment because his, he's a pretty recognizable guy. He's got dreadlocks. Um, and so, you know, people will, with him being a social media influencer, if he walks in a spot, people know who he are, who he is. So he doesn't want the customer service experience to be one where people are automatically catering toward him. He said, normally what he'll do is he'll send his family in and they'll order takeout and go eat the food somewhere else. But they, his reviews are based on how the food tastes and the kind of service that they get as they're ordering takeout. Well, he visited a couple of popular uh, brunch places in Atlanta uh, that he left bad reviews for. And one in particular, I can't remember the name of it, but um, he talked about how um, he sent his wife in to order takeout. Uh, they told him it was going to be a wait, which was fine. Um, but they were very rude, not accommodating, uh, you know, and just really, really bad customer service. And then the food, when he got the food, the food wasn't good. And so he left a bad review and all hell broke loose. And like, so then the owner was trying to call him like, hey, you know, can you come back? So forth and so on. Uh, there was another brunch spot where uh, they were also quite rude and they had all these rules and regulations. Like you could only be in the establishment for two hours. You could only be seated for two hours. There was a one hour wait. Um all of this stuff. Some places weren't even taking takeout. Like you had to be eating in the spot. And so one particular spot, he sent his wife in. They gave her, you know, a, a hard way to go. He comes in to kind of rectify it, you know, just calmly and peacefully. And they recognize him. When they recognize him, they say, oh, well, well, no, we don't have a, a, a we, we told your wife it'd be a, a, a one hour wait. Uh, we, we, we'll seat you right now. And he's like, no, I don't want that. I want to be treated just like a regular person. And, you know, that he talked about that in his review. And I watched a couple of his reviews. The guy's on point. I, I like him. I, I don't follow him on TikTok, but I do like him. Um, but a lot of people in this city felt a way about his reviews. And I'm like, we've all been to brunch spots in this city. And I didn't see that he lied about anything. I mean, from some of the brunch, particularly some of the popular brunch spots, I mean, if you're going for something other than the food, you could have a good time. If you're going for something other than the drinks, you can have a good time. But from the loud music to unruly behavior to bad customer service to high price food that don't really taste that good in some of these spots. Yeah, I'm not. I, I agree with him a thousand percent. And I think, you know, a lot of people from Atlanta took it personally. But I mean, he was telling the truth about this city. The brunch spots are highly overpriced and highly overrated. And if you want to go to a nice brunch spot, I would suggest if you come to the city of Atlanta, go someplace where nobody else is at. Don't go to the popular spots because the popular spots are the worst ones, to be honest. And I found Keith Lee to be very truthful, not malicious, but very truthful in his reviews. And um, if you follow him, check him out. I mean, but he, I think what he showed me was, you know, the fact that his wife could see receive poor customer service, but when he walked in and they didn't know it was his wife, when he walked in, it was like, oh, 
No, there's no two hour. There's no one hour wait. We'll seat you right now. He's not looking for that. He just wants to be. And we all want to be treated like that. Treat every customer like they are Keith Lee, because in reality, they just might be. Um, another thing that that I, I kind of want to share is the, something that I shared with my coworker at that particular time about her experience with her phone is that, you know, the thing that I tell people, particularly when you're dealing with people over the phone, customer service agents over the phone, um, don't argue with them. Uh, yeah, they're there to listen to you, but don't argue with them. Um, now I'll admit <laughs> it is extremely frustrating to call, particularly, and I'll use, um, AT&T, who I have my internet service through in my home. Um, it is extremely <laughs> uh, frustrating for me when I call AT&T to help me with a technical issue. And this has happened several times. And I speak with someone who is not in this country presently. You know, I'm speaking to someone who, and I'm not picking on anybody, but let's just say I'm, I'm speaking to somebody who's in India presently. And his name is Andy. And I know his real name really ain't Andy, but his name is for AT&T, he's Andy. And his, and our language barrier, he can't understand what it is I'm saying. And I can't understand what it is he's saying. I don't really know how Andy's going to help me if he can't understand what I'm saying. I am asking you about this router and why I'm having internet connection problems. And you could barely make out what I'm saying. And I could barely make out what you're saying. Now, if anything, you should be able to understand my English. I think I speak English pretty well. <laughs> I think when I'm not speaking in slang, I think I speak English pretty, pretty good. Um, but yeah, that's extremely frustrating. It's extremely frustrating to call customer service and you have someone who does not speak our language as well. Again, not picking on anybody, not discriminating. That's just what it is. A lot of companies, they hire and outsource their work. I have no problem with that. But what I do have a problem with is that if you're put in a position to help me, I just want you to help me. <laughs> I mean, like, it, that's pretty simple. Um, but ultimately, you should try to be as courteous as you can be to the customer service rep. Again, don't argue with them because when you argue with them, you're not going to get done what it is that you're looking to get done. You need help. They can or and should help you. You're not going to help somebody that you're arguing with. I mean, that's just, that's the bottom line. If, if, if we want to keep it 100, that's what it is. I'm not, it's, it's, and I'm just saying this, even if I were the one on the other end of the phone, if I were the customer service rep, if you're screaming in my ear, if you're cussing me out, I'm not helping you. In fact, I might even mysteriously drop your call. And then when you call back, you're probably not going to talk to me. You're going to talk to somebody else because I'm not dealing with you. So just keep that in mind. Um, before I get out of here, I got to share with you guys a customer service issue that I've had, uh, went to beef with. Uh, and I normally don't get into beef with companies or whatever like that. But, you know, um, we, 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 we've had a beef and, you know, I, I'm disappointed that it ended uh, the way that it did. Um, so at the time of this recording, back in December, December 5th specifically, uh, your boy 12 Kyle jumped on the internet um, and I saw this website that had popped up, I think on my, I don't know where it popped up at, but an email popped up and uh, advertising um, some hoods and some t-shirts. Now, if you guys follow the podcast, I like to wear different t-shirts. I like, you know, some of the, the prints and stuff like that. And uh, I saw these HBCU t-shirts. And it was HBCU t-shirts and they featured uh, the premier HBCU, uh, Historically Black College and University, uh, South Carolina State University, which you all know that I am a proud alum of. And so is my wife, Sharice. And so they advertised for these uh, t-shirts and hoodies. And I was like, oh, this would be dope. This would be nice, you know, a nice little Christmas gift uh, amongst the other Christmas gifts that I was going to get, uh, one for myself and one for Sharice. And so I saw a hoodie. And a t-shirt. And it just said South Carolina State University on it. And I thought to myself, that'd be dope, right? And so I placed the order. The order was $77.75. And 
and that was on December 5th. And now I knew that I was kind of cutting it close because, of course, it's Christmas time. Uh, you know, when you're ordering something, generally speaking, if you order it after um, after Thanksgiving, uh, there's a good chance that you may or may not get it by Christmas. So I knew I was kind of rolling the dice ordering it, but I, but it looks so dope. And I mean, of course, like I said, I bought Sharice other things. So if I didn't get it for Christmas, if I didn't have it in my hand on Christmas day, it's fine. We, we've been married, you know, 23 years now at the time of this recording. So, you know, she ain't tripping off no gift that she don't have on Christmas morning. Right. Um, and plus I would have told her like, it's coming, whatever. Um, so after the, like I said, the, the, the actual total was like, um, it was some huge discounts that they added on it. So the final bill, it was, I think it was supposed to be like a hundred dollars, but by the time they added the discounts or whatever, like that first time buyers or whatever, whatever the case was, it was $77 and 75 cents. Keep that number in mind. So two t-shirts, two hoodies, right? So we go through December. I get an email probably around and I'm checking because, you know, there's a tracking number that you can check. So I'm checking the tracking number, nothing. And so I checked maybe the week before Christmas and it said that, you know, things were on back order, uh, that they probably would not have any merchandise out until January. Um, they said specifically in an email cause the email came to me and I guess whoever it wasn't, it was, it said, Hey Kyle, but it was also, uh, you know, it was a mass email or whatever. There was some type of jam in their production. And so they had to stop production because some merchandise had gotten lost and misplaced. Some orders had gotten lost and misplaced. And they stopped production and they were going to start production in the new year. And they were going to start on January 3rd. Um, and, you know, to check back, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So now that wasn't what I wanted to hear, but you know, I was like, okay. And so we roll into the new year and the first week of January comes by and I send them an email. And, um, I don't think I t told you the name of the company. The name of the company is called fashion snob, uh, fashion snob.com, which by the way, well, I'll, I'll get into it in a second. Um, so, and it's a black owned business, right? So I email fashion snob. Info at fashionsnob.com. Email them back. Hey, just checking the status of this particular order. You guys said that it would be out. Blah, 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 blah. What's the deal? No response. Okay. <laughs> so a week, a week goes by. I send another email. Hey, and, and I, the email that I'm sending, I am resending it with the, e with the original email beneath it. Hey, I sent this email about a week ago. Haven't heard anything. You know, you guys said that you would be blah, 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 whatever, whatever. So then someone responds back. Hey, Kyle, we're sorry about it. Uh, you know, we had to shut down production. We had to check. We were checking to see if, you know, all the orders, some orders got misplaced and some orders, some merchandise was, 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 I can't remember the, the term they used, but lost basically. Um, they're not sure if mine was what have you. Uh, but we will, we will reconvene and have everything back up and running by January 28th. Okay. So I'm like, okay, January 20th. So now, so they're giving me a date. So I'm like, all right, I'll wait. So again, I wait, wait, no, no. They said that they would respond to me and let me know when everything was back up and running. And when they had gotten my information, my package back out again, $77, 75 cents. So, and keep in mind, on December 5th, when I placed the order, they took my money. So, and I touched on this on a uh, big smash podcast, shout out to smash bet the house podcast. Um, so I took, I, I talked about that on the episode. I think it was me smash and Ringo shout out to Ringo as well. Um, and so, you know, I, I knew I was going to have a customer service, uh, podcast. So I wanted to wait until this was resolved until, I, 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 you know, recorded this episode because I wasn't sure how this was going to be because I really, really wanted the shirt and the shirts and the, and the hoodies. And so I also understand too, black owned businesses, it doesn't necessarily behoove me to use my platform as far as my podcast or my social media to, you know, publicly destroy a brand. 
But at the same time, $77.75 does not grow on trees. Um, I'm not into throwing away money. I believe in investing on money and I believe in black businesses and I believe in supporting them. Um, you guys have seen me uh, on here. I have sported a hoodie from uh, Baylorism, my boy Baylor, and a t-shirt from uh, the Too Much Game podcast. Shout out to Uncle Dolomite. Um, so I believe in supporting black owned businesses. I believe in supporting those brothers and I will continue to do so. Um, but anyway, so back to fashion snobs. So probably the first, no, it was right around Valentine's day. I sent him another email. Hey, this is my fourth email. I haven't heard anything. What, what's going on? Please respond and let me know what's happening. Another week go by, no response. And every time that I send them an email, because their account is set up in the shop app, they, I guess, check to see the shop app. So you get a notification that the, that it was checked on the shop app. So someone's seeing my emails because they kept ch checking the shop app. Now, if you go on the app and then you go to the, um, the, uh, the postal service link on January 3rd, a label was created saying that it was to be shipped to the postal service. But, but, but it says at the bottom, a label has created waiting on the merchandise from the merchant, meaning that they created a label to send my stuff. But here's the catch. Fashion snob never sent, took it to the, to the mail people. They never took it to the postal service. So all they did was create a label. So it, if you go to the postal services website, it looks like a label and a label was created, but they never received the merchandise. That doesn't do anything for me. Right. So by this time I'm fed up. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off. It's the end of February. And I send them a final email. I said, look, I want this resolved. Just send me my money. I don't want anything else. And, I, and I'm paraphrasing here. I don't want anything else. Just send me my money. This is awful customer service, particularly for someone who was recommended your services. And this is my first time. This is deplorable for a black owned business. So someone by the name of Bailey, B-A-Y-L-E-E, -E, emails me back. Hey, Kyle, we're sorry. We, and she said she types this long diatribe email, you know, we're sorry. We will either issue you. We, no, she said, basically, we reviewed your account. We can't find uh, your merchandise. We are more than willing to create another, you know, two T-shirts and two hoodies and get that out to you. ASAP or we will refund your money. And see, here's the thing. They didn't want to refund the money because on their website, and I didn't see this and this is my fault. And this is where the customer isn't always right because this is where I was wrong as a consumer on the website. Bef after I purchased it, I did see on the website that they didn't offer any refunds. If something was wrong with the merchandise, if a letter was misspelled or something was whatever, something was whack, like, they could give you a credit or they could provide it for you again, but you weren't going to get your money back. Right. And so I did not know this and that's on me. I should have seen it because it is clear on their website, or at least it was clear on their website. Uh, so I don't want to leave that out. That's where I went wrong. And so Bailey sends me this email and she said, you know, like if you want your refund back. And so I immediately respond to her within two minutes please send me my refund ASAP. And please also let me know when to expect the refund. That was like the last week of February. So I didn't, and again, she's sitting at a computer. And again, every time that I respond, someone sit, someone's hitting the shop app. So I'm still getting notifications that my email is being read, right? And so I get another notification. So Bailey doesn't respond. So then a couple of days ago from the time at the time of this recording, I go to email them again to say, look, I'm tired of playing with y'all. Now, granted, I'm not going to sue you over seventy seven dollars and seventy five cents, but I am beyond pissed off. Like this is it's, 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 utter, it's utterly ridiculous at this point. 
at this point, it's 12 Kyle versus Fashion Snob, right? And so something said, well, hey, go to their website. And I went to their website, and the website was dead. There was never a number on the website to call, so you could only send an email. The email that I sent didn't bounce back, but the website was gone. And so I said, you know what, let me check IG. So I went to the IG page and the IG page didn't exist anymore. And I went to the Facebook page, right? And the Facebook page is still there, but there hasn't been a post since February 9th on the Facebook page. At the time of this recording, it's March 3rd. So in essence, they're out of business. That 7775 is never coming back. It's unfortunate. I don't know what happened. The disruption in their chain may have been broken. There may have been theft. There may have been embezzlement. I'm not even sure. The one thing I was sure of is that that 7775 ain't coming back to me. But. <laughs> I said, you know what? Let me call my bank. So I call up my bank, talk to Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, what's up? It's 12 Kyle. Let me tell you what's going on. So I tell Jeff what's going on. Okay, 12 Kyle, no problem. We will refund you. Ba- just file the claim. And Jeff helped me file the claim. We'll send you back your $77.75. So a claim has been filed. Um, I don't expect them to respond because. I don't really know how they can respond. I've got my money back. It is what it is. Uh, Lesson painfully learned. Now, here's the thing. I could have done this, and and Big Smash from Bet the House suggested that I do this a month ago when we recorded that episode. But I wanted to give them a chance because, again, it's a black-owned business. And and I'll be honest with y'all. I even thought I gave it a, 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 a single thought to when Bailey sent that email, hey, we, we can get you your merchandise and get it to you so fast, ASAP, for a second, I, because I still wanted the T-shirts and the hoodies. And to be honest, we're, we're almost out of hoodie season. So these hoodies wouldn't have been worn again until the fall. And I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe that's just me being naive. Maybe that's just me wanting to support a Black-owned business. but. Bad business is bad business. And again, I expect that from McDonald's. I don't expect that from Fashion Snob. And I don't know Fashion Snob. The owner of Fashion Snob could walk in here with a Fashion Snob jersey on. I wouldn't know who he was or she was. It could be Bailey. It could be somebody else. I'm not rocking with Fashion Snob. Should they ever come back? It appears to me that they're done. Unfortunate. Sorry. Best of luck to you. Um, but it, it left us, it left a sour taste in my mouth and I'm disappointed because again, I like the t-shirts and I like those hoodies and me nor my wife will never rock them. And I'll be honest, if fashion snob sent me those tomorrow, I'd kindly put it back in a package and send it right back to it. Cause I don't want it at this point. Even if you gave it to me in essence for free, I don't want it. I don't need it. You know, you made it like this. You created this. And so you have to wear this. I'm not wearing it and I'm not going to represent your company because the first thing somebody's going to say is, well, hey, where'd you get that t-shirt from? And or they definitely would say, hey, where'd you get that hoodie from? And see, that's how we build brands and that's how we build businesses. If somebody sees me in a Baylorism hoodie, I expect them to say, hey, where, that is a dope hoodie. Where'd you get that from? And you know what I'm going to say? I got it from my boy Baylor. He is a up and coming designer. Here's his website. Hey, where'd you get that t-shirt from? Oh, I got that from Uncle Dolomite. You heard of him? You never heard of him? Oh, Uncle Dolomite from the Too Much Game podcast. That's the homie from LA. Oh, check out his website. He got some nice, nice stuff on there. Check it out. Buy something. Hey, and I tell you what, when you buy something, tell him that I sent you. Not that I'm going to get a discount, but I want him to know that I'm referring people to him. That's how we build businesses. That's how we build brands. That's how we build pride. That's how we build a black dollar. But just because you black, I'm not going to let you hustle me. 
I'm not going to let you get over on me. I'm not going to let you go just stomp me out like I'm nobody because I'm not. And I, to be honest, I'm not going to let McDonald's do it either. I have a dollar and my dollar is worth a lot of money. My one dollar, because it's a, it's a black dollar. Black dollars have so much power. We don't even know how much power we have in this economy. We move needles. We move culture. But at the end of the day, you can't be satisfied with poor customer service. My dollar demands that you give me the product that I'm paying for. My dollar demands that you give me the service that I'm paying for. If not, I will take my dollar elsewhere. And I'm perfectly fine with that. And that's the thing that businesses have to understand. But now, if you can take an apparel company like Gucci and put on a, a, a model with black face and put it on your advertising budget and advertise, and then there's a huge uproar and people, oh, I'm not buying Gucci anymore. I'm not buying Gucci anymore. And then you issue an apology. And then six months later, back, black folks are back to buying Gucci. Then you haven't done anything. And for those who were yelling, yelling at the clouds, you wasn't doing anything either but yelling. Because you back in line at the Gucci store buying stuff. I'll never buy anything Gucci. I've never, I, I'm not into designer fashion, but they don't make stuff for me. That goes for Versace. That goes for any other high-end brands with A's and E's that you can't pronounce. <laughs> Balenciaga don't make shoes for me. I'd rather put on a pair of Air Jordans. I mean, no knock to anybody that does. They don't represent me. And I don't represent them. And the one time I tried to represent for fashion snob, they didn't come through. And I don't feel foolish. I feel like I did the right thing. I mean, I held out as long as I could, but I got my money back. So we good. I don't have to get another E. I'm sure I'm never going to get another email from them. Uh, I'm sure that they're not going to see this podcast. And if they do, cool. They can call me. Yeah, we can come on the podcast and talk about it if you want. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You're not coming on the podcast. <laughs> we ain't that cool but uh it's unfortunate and it appears that the business is out of business and hopefully you know and I, I i did go to their facebook page and i did see that there was someone else who on the last post that they made made a comment of they purchased something in december and they were waiting on it as well and it was february and eventually they got it but i ain't get mine so well, it is what it is in conclusion Customer service is very important. How you treat people, the service that you perform is very important. It's important to your bottom line. It's important because what happens is when you don't treat people fine or good, they can go to the internet and say what happened. They can leave Yelp reviews. They can leave bad reviews. They can tell the world. It's not just how it was like in the 80s. All we had was word of mouth. So what happened to me at Fashion Snob could have happened to anybody. I couldn't tell the world about it because I don't have contact with the whole world in 88. In 2024, I do. And so, you know, you have to be mindful of the fact that you want to provide good customer service. Because if you don't provide good customer service, ultimately, you're going to run out of customers. That's going to do it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. The podcast drops every Sunday, excuse me, every Thursday at midnight. From time to time, we drop bonus episodes on Sundays at midnight. Uh, if you're on social media, follow us, 12 Kyle, 12 Kyle podcast uh, on Twitter X, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. TikTok is only 12 Kyle podcast. Um, the podcast drops, make sure that you follow it and subscribe and download, uh, any and everywhere you get podcasts, you can leave comments on Spotify. And we also have a YouTube channel as well, where we have all the audio and video of every episode. Uh, you can also leave comments there as well. And if you feel so inclined, send us a couple of dollars so we can buy some more shirts and hoodies. <laughs> Dollar sign T W E L V E K Y L E. Again, that's going to do it for me. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. I'll catch you guys next time. Five Gs.